Welcome everybody, thank you so much for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. I'm excited. Um, we are doing back to school night in a totally different way than we've done in the past. This year we are trying to partner with parents and teachers together to work on a goal to help your students achieve better in a certain area. Um, here is a required slide um, about how our school is a Title I school. And Title I just means that we receive extra federal money um, to support all the students in our school. And um, the amount of money we get depends on the number of students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. The she's because he stuff is right up here. Um, we use it to buy things like additional staff, book supplies, and materials. If you'd like to help out at our school, you can participate by volunteering. We love volunteers, so if you have any extra time, I'd love your presence in our classroom. Um, and we really, we're glad you're here and working with us to help students achieve. So to go over our agenda quickly, we are going to do a little welcome. We'll do a quick icebreaker. It won't be bad, I promise. Um, I'm going to talk about the skill that we're working on this year with our team. And um, we'll look at some whole class data, individual student data, and then I will show you how you can help your student by practicing these things at home. And there's materials for you to do that as well. So I wanted to pass these out. We can start by just Filling out a name tag if you write, wouldn't mind introducing yourself to somebody else in the classroom, uh, letting them know whose parent you are. So I will hand this out. All right, I'm going to keep talking as you guys finish up. So, our goals for tonight why are we here? One of the reasons is that family surveys at Carnegie have indicated that you guys want to know how to help support your students at home. So we wanted to bring you guys in tonight and show you one way you can. Um, I also wanted to have a chance for you to review your students' progress in that goal. We're looking at addition and subtraction. Um, so we're going to look at that. And then we're going to write a 60-day goal because about 60 days from now we'll be having our November conferences and we can check in with each other about your child's progress at that time. Okay, so looking forward to the whole year, we have our first team meeting tonight. We are the team, the parents, and the teacher together. Um, so we're meeting for the first time tonight. We will all meet back up again, hopefully during November conferences, to check in on that goal. Ideally, at that date, we will set another goal, and then all of us together come meet again sometime I guess it's March 15th, tentatively. Um, and then a possible meeting again in the spring. But the goal is to set a goal, meet up, check in on it, set a new goal, and then meet again to see how we're doing. So we can work together um, to help your student grow. Interpreters, if I'm talking too fast, please let me know. You can stop me. Okay. Um, so since we're a team, we both got a few responsibilities. So as a parent, and you guys are already doing it, you're here, you're attending the meeting, so yay. And that hopefully you will find a tiny bit of time throughout the week to help your child practice at home, this skill. And we're not talking about like half an hour a night. I'm hoping for maybe five to ten minutes a night. Just a little bit of practice here or there, because we've got 60 days to get to improve on this goal. Um, my responsibility as a teacher, I will prepare the data for the meetings, I will work with you to support your student, and I will be teaching these skills at school as well. So hopefully they'll be hearing the same message from you guys at home. And from me at school. Okay, so. The foundational skill that we have chosen as a fourth grade team to focus on is the addition and subtraction standard algorithm. And when I say standard algorithm, it's like the old fashioned way that we learned how to, where you stack the numbers up and you borrow or you carry numbers. 
Um, one of the reasons we chose that is because it's one of the things in math that we still teach at school the same way as you guys probably learned at home. So it's something that hopefully we all already know how to do because we learned it as children. Um, we also chose it because addition and subtraction are life skills. Your child will need to know how to add and subtract out in the world. Um, also, we chose to focus on addition and subtraction because it helps when we move on to multiplication and division. They need to know how to add and subtract efficiently so they can move on to more challenging skills later in the school year. Um, and a grade level expectation by the end of fourth grade. We expect fourth graders to be able to add and subtract efficiently numbers up to the millions. So seven digit numbers. Um, and I wanted to mention that sub adding and subtraction is super important. It's not the only skill we work on in fourth grade. It's just the one that we've chosen to work on as a team together. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, so we are going to dig into some data. So if you guys wouldn't mind opening up your folders. Inside of that folder should be a black and white piece of paper that looks like this. You're also going to want to peek into your folder. Hidden back here is a number. That number <coughs> corresponds with this number. It's your student identifier. So if your student's number five, you're going to look at number five. That, that number in pencil. So at this time, you should be taking a look to see how your child did series one, the bottom one, the blue one up here, is how many digits they got correct in addition algorithms. The orange line on top, the top line in your graph, is how many they got correct in subtraction. I will show you something else, hopefully that will make this more clear. Okay, the other thing I'd like you to do is take out your student's pre-assessment. There should be one page in there that is filled up with math. So you can see there, this side is addition. You can see their score out of 25. This side is subtraction, and you can see their score out of 19. The way we scored this was each correct digit gets its own point. So if they got the answer 120, they would get two points for the one and the two. They wouldn't get the third point for that. One thing that I want to let you know is that this is an assessment we gave before teaching any addition and subtraction in fourth grade. So this is either what they learned in third grade or it's what you taught them at home. So if you are seeing very low numbers right now in the school year, don't worry. Because um, third grade does not teach standard algorithm. You'll notice a lot of your students did not stack them up and add them like you and I would have. They had some much longer um, strategy for this. So the reason why is because this was before we did any teaching. We have already started teaching addition. We started subtraction yesterday. So likely your student is already better than they were on the day that we gave this test. Um, so I say that because I don't want you to feel too nervous if you're seeing a low number. Does anybody have any questions on how to find which um, bar is your student or any questions about this a little bit out of order? The next thing I'd like you to pull out is the blue paper that has holes on it. And you're gonna use a pencil or a pen or a marker. And in the Today My Child Can, you're gonna write down, add, and then put their score, subtract and put their score. My child can add. 20 out of 25, right now can subtract 1 out of 19. So put the present level right here, the score you see.
The next thing I'm going to do is give you some time to either think on your own or talk with your table mates or your spouse that you have brought about a reasonable goal that you think your child can achieve by November conferences. And um, we want it to be reasonable if your child scored zero to five points. A reasonable goal wouldn't be they would get 100% on their test in six weeks. We want to do something that your child can feel successful at when they reach this goal. For a lot of kids who are scoring like I don't know, 10 to 15 or so in addition, a good goal would be for them to master addition by then. We have been working on it, we're gonna keep working on it. If you work on it at home, a great goal would be for them to get almost all of them right in addition. But it's your goal to choose. You're gonna be working on it at home with your students, so choose something that you think you can do. And I will come around, I'll answer questions. You can talk with other people, you can write it down yourself. Here comes the fun part. You guys get to get out your bag of supplies that I have given you to take home. And I'm going to show you a couple of super simple ways that you can practice these skills at home. And the first thing I'd like you to get out is just, I guess, your marker. I'm going to get out my dice. You don't need yours tonight. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to practice. <coughs> it might seem kind of silly. I'm going to ask you guys to follow along with me. I'm going to show you how I would show a student how to do addition and subtraction so you can see the way I talk about it, so you can talk about it the same way at home. So you're going to have to follow along. Number 10, you're learning addition with me. Okay. The reason we have grids on this paper is to help students line numbers up. One of the things that gets in the way of success is when you're stacking large numbers and they get all like wonky, it's hard to be accurate. So something that we have kids do is we have them draw lines between numbers or if they have access to grid paper, that works well too. So, depending on the skill level of your student, you can choose if you want them to be start working with three-digit numbers, or four-digit numbers, or five-digit numbers. That's up to you. If they're scoring one to five points, you want to start with smaller numbers. If they have gotten better at it, you'll want to keep increasing the numbers. One way you can do it is with a dice, which I've included, and you'll just start rolling numbers. And I'm going to show you with... Um, three-digit numbers. I'd love it if you would follow along with me and write it on your paper. So we got a three, now we got a one, now we got a two, and then we're going to do a six, and a four, well this one's not going to be too tricky, is it? And a one. That didn't work out very well, but that's okay. We're going to start this way. When I teach kids to add and subtract, I have to remind a lot of them that you always, always, always start in the ones column. A lot of kids try to start someplace else, and we got to start in the ones column, and we just add it like we used to, like you guys learned. Two plus one is three. Four plus one is five. Three plus six is nine. When you use the dice, you don't have to do a lot of carrying over. It is more simple. If your student is ready for some more challenging practice, we've also included playing cards. So you can use those. And you can have them build numbers. You can make choices in your family about what you're going to do with the face cards. You can have them all be worth zeros. You can pick them out of your deck doesn't matter to me. But you want to shuffle it up, oopsie. And you can also use it to build numbers. 
should have planned this better. So you're going to pull some random numbers. Okay. About a seven and nine and a seven, so we can do another one over here. Seven, nine, seven. And we can make another number. We got a five and an eight and a four. That's going to make this more interesting adding. <laughs> And so again, you got to remind them all we start in the ones column. We give each of them names. There's the ones column, the tens column, the hundreds, the thousands, ten thousands. They all have a name. And we add them up. Seven plus four is 11. We talk about how it breaks the rule if both digits go in one column, they don't fit. So you got to erase that guy over there and put them up on top. And we're ready to add the next column. We know 9 will make 10 plus 8 is 18. If we put them both down here, it breaks the rule. So you have to move this over here. We can add That's the a great way to practice. This. So you're going to use either your cards or your dice for this. They'll need scratch paper, or they can use the back side of this, or if you have another whiteboard, they'll need something to practice on. With a two-player game, you decide, are we working with three-digit numbers? Are we working with four-digit numbers? Each person, oh, then you have to decide, sorry. Are we working on addition or subtraction? So before you start, you'd say, we're practicing addition. We're doing four-digit numbers. On the first round, both people pull enough cards out. If you're doing four-digit numbers, you would pull four and four. So I can make my own addition equation. The other player, they would also pull out four cards and four cards. They would each do their own addition equation. And then whoever has the greater number wins that round and they get to like color this in or put their initials in here. And then you would play it again. You build yourself each another set of addition equations. You compare with your partner who's got the greater number the person with the bigger number wins, and then they get to put their initials here. Once you've filled it up, you can count to see who got more, and they are the winner. So it is hopefully a little bit more engaging than just sitting down and doing addition or subtraction. Hopefully we can trick them into getting a little bit of extra practice in. Um, so yeah, I think that is all I have for the practice portion. Does anybody have any questions about that? Um, one thing I did want to mention, I forgot. If your student has gotten this down, like let's say you do some practice and they are getting it, the next thing that you can move on to is multiplication facts. Because they also in fourth grade need to know all of their multiplication facts. Um, I'll show you a super quick multiplication game if you don't mind listening to that. Um, you can play multiplication war. So if you play multiplication war, one partner puts down two numbers, a nine and an eight. The other partner puts down two numbers, a five and a four. You both multiply. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for our secondary oh. parent-teacher team meeting. At this time, we are transitioning our students into their locations by green, blue, or red wristbands. You will see signs of where to locate your students. We will be checking to make sure parents and students match. Please join us at the resource fair in the cafeteria before you leave. Thank you. Okay, we're playing multiplication war. This person, they multiply, five times four is 20. This person, they multiply, nine times eight is 72. 72 is greater than 20, they win, so they get to keep all these cards. And then you play again, and the person who gets the most cards at the end of the game wins. And it's just an easy way to practice multiplication facts. Um, there's also apps on computer programs to practice as well. So if you're feeling pretty confident with addition and subtraction, you can move on to multiplication. Um, 
Our time is almost up. I'm going to ask you guys to do one more thing for me, and then I'm available after this to answer any questions you have. So the last thing I believe, oh, we've got our next meeting, November conferences. Last thing, um, fourth grade team this year, we're partnering with UWT. Um, with their math department, they're doing a project about mathematical modeling. Um, we're doing a lot of real world math problems. And since it's, um, it's a study done by the University of Washington, um, the professor there would like to videotape students working, well, and me teaching, um, to share with other academics, um, her colleagues, and to show other teachers what it looks like to do this kind of work. There's a permission slip. There's English in your um, folders. I have extra Spanish ones if you'd like. If you could please read through it quickly. I'm going to make you do it tonight so I can have it. Um, there's a page of permissions about if you're okay with a child being in a, a video or not, if you're okay with them having an audio recording or not. So as you finish that up, Oh, there's the last page of it too. As you finish this up and you hand it to me, you are free to go. But as I said, I'm here to answer any questions. And I really appreciate you guys coming tonight. Thank you so much.